looks like I'm on. All right, time to play some more Final Girl. Uh, Final Girl from Van Ryder Games. Kind of a sequel to Hostage Negotiator in that it uses the same system as a solo game. Hostage Negotiator. Well, this is just the base game right here, at least the box for it. Um, with the career mode, that's what I've played. That's pretty fun. And this is a similar game. Just came out, or at least I just got my copy a couple days ago. Uh, let's see, you have the core box, and then there are different features that you can have to go along with it. Um, there are five of them. Here's another one. Each one has a couple different characters to play as a monster, or a killer, and a location. Uh, let's see, last time I was Lori going up against Hans the Butcher, and was able to kill him, so I won. And that was at Camp Happy Trails. Um, each one of the features, yeah, has a location and a killer. You can mix and match and do any girl, any killer, in her, any location. Ooh, I think what would be really interesting would be to find a way to do multiple killers. Uh, but this is a solo game. Hmm, yeah, I kind of also wonder if you could find a way to do multiple girls, multiple killers, and or even one killer, and turn it into a co-op. Uh, all right, core box, we don't need that. Each one of the features has magnetic cover on there. This one huh, seems to move around pretty easily. Um, so here's Creech Manor. I'm going to use that location. Uh, some setup stuff for that. We don't need those. And then, I already got all that stuff out. Oh, so these are the two final girls with this one. Uh, well, whatever her name is, and whatever her name is. More setup stuff. So, I can be one of them. You know what? I'm going to be the ginger. What's her name? Does it say on here? Well, there's a card for her. All right, so Poltergeist, that's the killer. There we go. Poltergeist is the killer, and the location is Creech Manor. There, layout flat. And uh, let's see, last time in the box, uh, there's a little secret envelope, and there's one here too, for Selena's eyes only, but there was nothing that ever told me to look at it, so I wonder if, I'm wondering if uh, you're ever prompted to open this, or if you should just look at it, uh, but which character? So I'm sure there's one in the other side as well. The other girl, Alice. I'm guessing Alice is the ginger. Come on. These things aren't the best for fitting in there. I mean, it fits fine, but stuff gets bent up a bit. <laughs> Overall, though, I mean, these boxes are pretty cool. Okay, go away. All right, so Poltergeist. I could also get this thing, um, Carolyn, and then this looks like that's the poltergeist. 
Yeah. Alice. Oh, here's Alice. She's carrying a shotgun. Nice. So I'm going to look at Alice's thing here. It's just a card. Let's see what it says. Alice's shotgun. This item may only be used when Alice is chosen as the final girl. To incorporate Alice's shotgun into your game, simply shuffle it into the chosen location's deck of item cards before setup. If you'd rather ensure that it is present in your game, deal out the appropriate number of item cards, less one, then shuffle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Alice's shotgun, that's probably just better than a regular shotgun. All right, so I guess that's what all what is in all of these. It's just, here's a special weapon that's just for this girl. Okay. Um, yeah, this can sit over here for now. Because I'm betting, where are my item cards for this? So, event cards that go with Creech Manor. Item cards that all go with Creech Manor, and I'm assuming one of them is just a shotgun. Ooh, Ritual Dagger, Padlock, Rope Ladder. Yep, shotgun. Are any of these items the same? Uh, yeah, flashlight, that was in the other one. Lucky dice, that was in the other one. Um, maybe there was a map. I didn't see all of them. Lucky rabbit's foot, energy drink, first aid kit, yeah, knife, old revolver, mysterious pills. So there are going to be a lot of duplicates of these item cards. But some of them are unique. I kind of feel like these common ones should have just been in the core box. So you only needed one copy of all of them. Well, I don't know if trash can lid's one of them, but yeah, whatever. So I'm going to have probably five copies of a lot of these. Oh, well. All right, so... Oh, I took out the shotgun. So regular shotgun. Range zero, so you have to be in the same space. Does one extra damage. Requires two hands. Uh, but this says the shotgun cannot modify an action card and must be used without one. So you just use this on its own. Once per turn, you can discard two cards from your hand and roll six dice, deal one damage to each enemy on your space for each success rolled. Okay. If at least half of the dice are blank, discard the shotgun. Oh, that sucks. Uh, but Alice's shotgun, it, it still cannot modify an action card, so you do the same thing. Once per turn, you can discard one card, so it only costs one card instead of two, from your hand and roll six dice deal. Uh, one damage to each enemy in your space for each success rolled. If at least half of the dice are blank, discard Alice's shotgun. Hmm. So, well, you just make sure you get some re-rolls. Now I'm wondering, like planning, which, you can get up to three stars for the next horror roll. Well, does that count as the dice? Could I just set three dice to successes and then roll the other three? I wonder. Hmm. Question to ask for Board Game Geek on exactly what this would do. But close calls. You can do some re-rolls. Uh, Lucky Rabbit's Foot. That'll allow a re-roll if I find that item. Hmm. All right. Well, I yeah, I want that to show up since it's a special weapon. So we'll set the shotgun aside, and then I need eleven other items. I assume. Let's see. Creature's Manor. Creature Manor is over one hundred years old, with a kind of character and historic charm that people love. It is the kind of home where every step, every new room, can call to one's imagination a story from the past. But the stories of Creech Manor are filled with horrifying events, macabre happenings, <clears throat> and supernatural powers beyond human understanding. Go away, for evil reigns within. Uh, special rules. One-way movement spaces. A few of the spaces have exits in one direction. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there are arrows on there. Okay. A few of the spaces... A few of the spaces have exits in one direction. There are three of them, yeah. These spaces have white arrows and lines indicating which direction you can move, obviously. 
the spaces are still considered to be adjacent in both directions, but you can only move one way. You're not allowed to move against an arrow. You can't climb up the tire swing and go back in a window, nor can you go through the hole in the ceiling in the washroom on the left side of the board. Yeah, tire swing, ladder. You can't climb a ladder, really. The rope ladder, if used, is the only exception and turns a one-way space into a normal space. All right, is that one of these items, I assume? Yeah, rope ladder. Okay. And don't need example, one-way one space, window spaces. Uh, okay, there are three, it's the same spaces. Window spaces are a new type of space in Creech Manor. There are two window spaces on the right. Yeah, yeah, window spaces do not have any special rules, but many terror and event cards will specif that specifically reference them. Oh, okay. Uh, <coughs> cards that refer to the ladder are referring to this ladder over here on the left. Uh, the ladder leading to the attic is artistic in nature. Um, oh, this ladder right there. Yeah, okay. All spaces are considered to be inside except for the three exit spaces. Well, yeah, that makes sense. These all certainly look like they're in the manor, and these do not. So, all right. These rules seem pretty obvious. Okay. So I'm using Poltergeist, which goes as the default for Creech Manor. How do you fight a Poltergeist? Let me ask you something. How does one fight something one cannot see? I can see it right there. It's simple, you don't. You get the hell out of there and you don't look back, you don't turn back, you don't do anything but run. If you do, it will ruin you, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Then, it will kill you. And, well, gonna need, uh, let's see, tarot cards that go with Poltergeist. And, there are two cards, well, there are a couple cards for the Final girl, Selena and Alice is in there somewhere. There's Alice. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna need those. Oh, there's another stack of cards. All right, so here are tarot cards that go with Creech Manor. All right, those all get mixed together. Special setup. Setup the game as normal with the following changes to the item decks when playing Poltergeist. The Carolyn and Mr. Floppy item cards. Those were somewhere else in the box. There they are. Carolyn and Mr. Floppy will always be in there. Okay. But neither will ever start the game face up on an item deck. Create the item decks as follows, or using your own method, as long as you ensure the previous statement is true. Take ten cards. Well, nine, because I want to include Alice's shotgun. Shuffle them. Set an item card. Yeah, yeah, that'll be... Uh... Where do these go? Does it matter which deck? No, it doesn't. All right, so, well, that's fine. So I only need nine cards. Special rules, the poltergeist has no health and cannot be attacked, damaged, or killed. Okay, so how do I win? No, there's no health bar. Uh, where are we? Ignore all effects that would damage the poltergeist. Huh. So maybe the shotgun's not going to be valuable to me. There, there needs to be something to kill. Uh, action cards that inflict damage may still be useful against some of the poltergeist terror cards. Okay. Since... Well, that's action cards. What about a shotgun? Since the poltergeist cannot be attacked, you do not win against her in the normal way. Instead, the only way to win against the poltergeist is to find Carolyn and save her by reaching the exit while she is with you. Okay. If the Forgetting Something Epic Dark Power card, that'll be one of these, 
is revealed. In addition to finding and saving Carolyn, you will also have to find her stuffed friend, Mr. Floppy. Oh, come on. Carolyn may never be discarded or removed from the game, and any effect doing so should be ignored. However, Carolyn may get shuffled back into an item deck, which is perfectly normal. Mr. Floppy has an effect that can be used if it is discarded, but cannot be used until the dark power is revealed. Mr. Floppy can never be discarded due to the game effect before the dark power is revealed, or if the forgetting something, epic dark power is in play. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, all right. Oh, I'm sure these are mixed up. All right, so I need nine of these. I'm gonna mix the shotgun in there, put the rest aside. Okay, mix these 10 up. So, three of these are going to be the face-up cards that are going to go up there. Okay, just put those out. Now we can mix these in. So, they won't be the first cards in any deck, the top card, and don't know where they're going to be. All right, but there's the garage, the trophy room, and the closet. Oh, no, trophy room isn't a search place. Garage. Oh, there we go. Attic. It was covered up. Uh, all right. See, Poltergeist starts at three on the horror level. So, not too far off from the green. And yeah, there's the other side that makes it, uh, looks like it's a lot harder on that side. Extreme horror. But I'm doing regular for now. All right. them up again. All right. Ooh, Lucky Rabbit's foot is in the garage. List of things in the blank, well, I guess in the attic. I don't know. Uh, okay, that's sitting in the attic and in the closet. I can see ancient text is the first item I can get in there. And we're using Alice, not Selena. Oh, I should take out Selena's weapon too. What's her special weapon? Selena's flashlight. I guess it's not a weapon. What does her flashlight do? The other flashlight wasn't too useful for me. Well, I think I got it too late for it to really be any useful last game. Once per action, you can look at the top of the tear deck, leave it on top, or place it on the bottom of the deck. You may discard this card while on a um, um, space where there, is, there are items to take the top item card. Yeah, that's better. I think the regular flashlight, it costs one time to look at the top card in the tear deck. All right, well, set that aside. for another time when Selena is being used. All right, Alice. Uh, if she rescues six victims, well, let's get a setup. All right. So what are all these people doing here at Creech Manor? There are two victims in the attic.
one on each of these. Uh, one over there. One there. Killer, the poltergeist, starts at the foyer. And Alice gets to start in the trophy room. Strange trophies is the setup. And there are five different ways the game might be set up. Event deck. How many of these are, am I supposed to have? I don't remember. All right, but there are all those victims. If I can save six victims, each one I save, I can pick one of, one of these things I want. Move one space, move two spaces. Take a cost two action card cost two or less action card, get two time, or gain one health. And if I can save six people, ooh, she only has four health. So three health plus one of these. Ah, accidentally turned one over. Yeah. All right, try to mix these up. Without flipping one over. Uh, six of the nine are blank. Three of them have one, well, one has one health, one has two, one has three, and that's if Alice loses all four of her health. Well, if I flip the token over and it has more health on it, then she's not dead yet. All right. So there's only a one in three chance. She won't die if she takes four damage. Okay, what else do we need? And there are these other tokens. I don't know what these are going to do. Well, there's rope ladder. I think that one's pretty obvious. It looks like this would break a ladder, maybe. There's a helicopter. Uh, a padlock. That was one of the items. And then a skull. Well, all right. Yeah, put those over here. And Carolyn's not around yet. Uh, Bloodlust tracker. Okay, all right, set up. Oh, yeah, and if I save enough people, she gets her special ability, which is choose one named action card for the remainder of the game. So yeah, choose one of these. For the remainder of the game, whenever you play that named action card, always roll exactly five dice regardless of the horror level or any other modifiers. All right. And she gets an extra health every time she recovers another victim. But, Currently, there are only six. I mean, there are only eight, and I need six of them to even get her special power. Uh, but that would be nice for something like Critical Blow to just say, all right, every time I use this, five dice. Well, three cards we'll put over here because I get to start with those. All right, and then we need one of the dark powers. Not looked at any of these cards, so I have no idea what the poltergeist dark powers are. And then we need one finale card. So, as long as there's a terror deck, uh, the poltergeist will just target the nearest victim or final girl. Do mo one movement, which currently a poltergeist can move two spaces, and then attack once, and currently does one damage. Victims only have one health, so one hit kills them no matter what. And we'll go with this one. Once it flips over, well then there will be a different action. Okay, don't need those. Tear deck, need ten of these. And yeah, you could do Creech Manor with a different killer. You could do Hans the Butcher in this one as well. Or in the other killers. Geppetto. Who else is there? Dr. Fright. And then uh, Inkanyama or something like that. And then you'd have different tarot deck because you'd have the Creech Manor cards plus whoever, whatever the cards are that go with the killer. All right, that's probably fine. Okay, 10 tarot cards.
Now, how many event cards do I need? I think it was eight. Setup. Blah, 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 blah. Feature film box. Yeah, got the killer. Killer finale cards. Yeah, yeah. Dark power. Terror cards. Yeah, we got that. Make a deck of 10 terror cards. Yeah, get the items done. We did that. Setup. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, health. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Health markers. Bloodlust. Time. There we go. Event. Shuffle the locations event cards and place them face down. Uh, no, it's just the whole deck. Okay. Which, how many are there? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there are ten event cards for Creech Manor. And we turn over the first one and have to do whatever it says, which, let's see, last time started with Girlfriend, which gave me an extra die, but would have been very bad if Girlfriend got killed in the same space as me. But that didn't happen. Um, then what was the other event? Later on, an event happened that really didn't do anything. I don't remember what it was. Oh, right. No, it did some. I think there was then another event that made victims go toward the killer. But, eh, didn't really hurt me too much. So, well, it seems like events are kind of a mixed bag. Those are the only two event cards I've seen. All right, let's see what we get here. Lights out. Roll one fewer dice, minimum of one, when resolving an action card that allows movement. Ignore this effect if you have a flashlight or candle. Whew, would really like to get a flashlight or a candle then. Okay. That's going to stink for a while. All right, so start with two dice. All right, so I have to find Carolyn in one of these three. Don't know where, and then get her out of there. What does ancient text do? You may lose one health to gain two time. Okay. It doesn't say discard that. Can I just do that over and over? Huh. I don't know. It doesn't say discard to lose one health to gain two times. Yeah, I think you can do that over and over. <clears throat> All right, I need to start writing down questions to find on Board Game Geek. Get their answers. All right, so what was that called? Lights out. Um... Oh, yeah, I had a question about the shotgun. And ancient text. Okay. Wow, I haven't even started playing yet. It's been 28 minutes. All right, I could have set it up beforehand. If I all right, if I stream this game again, I'll set it up beforehand. Um, okay. So I start out. I have my six cards that are free. <laughs> two of them are walk, which can move me one or two spaces. Although I'll only get to roll one die, and if I don't roll a star. If I roll the one die and don't roll a star, I do get to move one space, but I'll lose one health and two time. Ugh. Okay, so, uh, well, I have to move over here to be able to go upstairs. So it's going to take two spaces, three, and then four, or you know, five to get to the attic. Or let's see, go over here, jump out the window, two, three, four, five, six to get to the garage. There's probably a quicker way. Yeah, stairs, stairs. So one, two, four to get to the garage. Oh. I don't like that lights out. I might die just trying to move. 
Well, you can always discard stuff too, possibly. All right, well, there are those. There's focus uh, to lower the whore level, try to get it down into the green so that then you get three dice, or two of those, uh, and then an attack, which isn't going to be any use right now, and short rest, which I'll probably need because I'll get hurt from walking. All right, but probably want to start off with focus and just try to... Um, get the horror level down. Get that extra die. All right, focus. Get over there. All right, so roll two dice. It'd be really nice to get two successes, but there's only a one in nine chance of that. Well, I got one. Okay. Uh, I do lose one time, but I do get to lower the horror level by one. All right. Do that again. Ah. Well, didn't get any successes, but I rolled a four. I can discard two cards to turn this into a success. And well, short rest and weak attack. I'm gonna do that, because then I at least have two dice when I try to move. Uh, all right, so we'll discard those so that now this is a success. So same thing, lose one time and lower this by one, and now I get three dice. But as soon as Poltergeist kills somebody, uh, that's going to go up one, so I'll need to lower that some more. Goes up two. Oh, she gets her dark power very quickly. Okay. Oof. If her bloodlust gets all the way to the top, every extra bloodlust, you take one damage. All right, well, I have two walks, but because the light's out, I only get to roll two dice instead of three. All right, one success, I get to move one space and lose a time. Two successes, I get to move two spaces and lose one time. Failure, I move one, lose a health and lose two time, or I can just lose two time but not move and not get hurt. All right, one success. Well, that's one space. Lose one time. I'm also not going to be able to buy much. I guess I'll just buy a sprint to try to move next turn. All right, walk. Well, I guess currently I'm the closest person to the poltergeist, so I would be the target right now. Unless I'm able to move. All right. Walk again. All right, same thing. One success. So I only get to move one space. Uh, lose one time. But now, um, well, it's me or this victim right here that are both closest to the poltergeist. So, eh, poltergeist is going to go after the victim. Because the killer does prioritize victims if there's a tie. All right. I only have two times, so now I get to buy cards. I'm just going to buy Sprint so that hopefully I can... Well, one success, I'll get to move two spaces, but this is making me move again, so I'll only get to roll, well, hopefully two dice. <clears throat> or if uh, something happens this turn and the horror level goes up, I'll just hang on to this and wait until the next turn. All right, so sprint's all I can buy. That uses both my time. So that's it for purchasing cards. And then this goes back to six. And these go to the store. Move these over a bit. These cost zero to buy, but you can't buy the cards you just discarded. They have a one round cooldown. Uh, next time I'll have six, though, I could also, I probably will buy some close calls. 
and these will be free. So I'll get all these back next turn. But it's the poltergeist turn. All right, so the poltergeist, the first thing the poltergeist does is targets the nearest person, final girl or victim. Does one movement, so two spaces. So one, two toward that victim. And then does an attack, but there's nobody in the location with the killer, so no attack. And then we draw a terror card. The windows and doors just slam shut. If you are inside, you may not move during the next action phase. Well, I guess I'm just hanging on to sprint. If you are outside, you may not enter the house during the next action phase. And draw another event card. Okay, well, at least the poltergeist didn't go do anything. Although, I don't get a move, so I'm going to be doing nothing on my turn. So this is definitely going to go up. Because the poltergeist, at the very least, should be killing that person. All right, lights out. Well, now we get another event. Liquid Courage. Victims will follow you into the killer's space. All right, so that one's actually a good one. Okay. Killer's turn's done. Uh, now we do the panic phase, but nobody got killed, so nobody panics. And then upkeep phase, nothing to do yet there. Since nowhere near the finale card, and I don't have any items. All right, so now it's my turn, but I can't move, so I can't use the sprint card. So all I'm going to do is purchase stuff. All right, so I get my six free cards, although maximum is 10 cards, so I might not want to buy all of these because I do have six points. Um, I have the two close calls. If I bought those, then I only have, I can only buy one more or not buy all these. See, the four pointers are retaliate which, well, I really don't need to be able to do damage back at the poltergeist. Guard's going to be just as good as retaliate for me, I think. Because either way, two successes ignore all damage. One success, reduce damage by you take by two. Zero successes, nothing happens on retaliate. But on guard, you still actually reduce it by one, to a minimum of one. Uh, and yeah, retaliate though, also you strike back at whoever attacked you. But since I can't hurt the poltergeist, um, I don't know if that's going to matter. Alright, so retaliate, that's out of the picture. I could get one of the guards, but I don't really think I need those yet. Planning, I can get some automatic successes. Hmm, okay. Oh, distraction. Lower the horror level. If you get two successes, you lower it by two, and you get two time. One success, you lower it by one, and you get one time. Failure sucks. Lose four time, but you can still lower it, or you raise it one and lose two time. Uh, but that would cost three. That would be five, and that would be it. Wasting one. Maybe I get one of the close calls now, and... Oh, I need search cards. That's right. Once I get where I'm going, let's see, I only need to move two spaces to get to uh, the closet. I really need to go after items and hopefully find a flashlight because the light's out, rather than maybe saving some victims early on. Well, I guess I could take this victim with me and go rescue that one and then head over to the garage, but nah. That's too much without the flashlight. Although, I've, outside you should be able to move. I mean, lights out inside, but if I'm outside, it should still have full movement. Oh, well. Whatever. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so let's see. So I'm thinking maybe distraction, close call. But then I'd only get to buy one search. And between sprint and walk, two walk cards, I really should be able to make it there. 
Yeah, maybe we don't get distraction yet because I really want to be able to do lots of searching. Uh, but Poltergeist is probably, well, is definitely going to make this move to there, but then I'll need focus to get it back down. But I have two focus cards. Uh, let's see, what is this? This is five points if I buy those. That's ten cards. Or, oh, that's right, it also improvise. Mm. Or maybe I don't get a close call yet. Or instead of one of these, I buy another close call. So that would be six points, but that'd be 11 cards. So maybe I don't get weak attack. All right, we'll do that. There, that uses up all six. Get the close calls over there. All right, that uses up all six, put it back. Um, yeah, put cards back there, there were no discards. Uh, all right, my turn's done, so now Poltergeist, same thing, moves toward the nearest victim, and then attacks, which even one damage, kills a victim, oh, dead victim, and then Bloodlust goes up one, which raises the horror level by one. I only have two dice now. And nothing else happened there. But we get another terror card. Ooh, lots of stuff. Uh, I have to kill you. It told me to kill you. If there are no victims on the board, discard, well, okay. Uh, <clears throat> then all victims in spaces adjacent to you move to your space. Well, that's just this one. Well, although that's not bad, then I can take this victim with me. Uh, this one's also adjacent. Next, if there are any victims in your space, you may play one action card that inflicts damage. You may play one action card that inflicts damage. Kill one victim for each damage. <laughs> Do not increase bloodlust. Huh. I do have one action card. No, I don't. I discarded. I didn't buy a weak attack. Okay, I don't get to do that. Uh, but yeah, the advantage of that would be Poltergeist Bloodlust level won't get to go up from killing those if I'm killing them. <laughs> then, oh, take damage for each victim in your space. Then they all panic. Oh, screw you. So. Since I don't have anything that can hurt them, well, if I'd known that was a possibility, I definitely would have had weak attack <laughs> or purchased Furious Strike or something just to, in case that came up. Okay. Uh, well, they deal two damage to me, bastards, and then they panic. So they panic uh, for each one of these victims that's panicking. We roll a die, and then let's see, it's a two and a five. So one of them goes this way, because it says three through six. And then, oh, I'm sorry, no, that would be going this way. But one of them goes this way, because that's for a one or a two, and then uh, five or six up here. All right. And it did say, if there are any victims in your space, you may play one action card. So that would not have included the shotgun or any other weapon if I had that. Well, the shotgun doesn't need an, uh, an action card, but it isn't an action card, so you wouldn't have been able to use it. All right. Well, good news is Poltergeist won't be able to reach and kill that one with the next movement. Depends on what the tarot card says, though. So far, Poltergeist hasn't moved from a tarot card. Okay, so now it's my turn. I'm down to two health. If that happens again, they could kill me. 
Uh, well, I need to get back in the green, so focus. Shoot, now I don't even know if I want to take victims with me. All right, focus. I get two dice. Ooh, one success. Yeah, unfortunately, I lose a time, but down into the green. So three dice now. Uh, you know what? Let's try to get it down again. May as well. Focus. Ah, no successes. Okay, I can lose two time, or I can discard two cards. I also have two close calls. I can re-roll a die or lose two time and re-roll all dice. And okay, you only get to re-roll one die. So basically this gives me a one in three chance of a success. But I can lose two time and do nothing or I can discard two cards to turn that into a success. Lower this another one and only lose one time. Well, cards are worth one time on their own. I think that's worth it, although not those. I want both of those. I kind of need short rest now because they hurt me. Mm. If I take the failure, I lose two time. And I need time because searching takes time and moving takes time. I'll run out of time if I lose two. Uh. All right, well, I need to keep these. Well, I have walk, walk, and sprint. I shouldn't need all three of them. Okay, walk. One of the walks and short rest. I'm going to discard those to do move that down one, make that um, only lose one time. Better discard area for now over there. Okay. <clears throat> Well, that stunk, but well, now I'm safely in there, at least for a little while. Um, all right, well, I need to move, so we'll do sprint. If I get two successes, I get to move up to three spaces, lose one time. One success, move two spaces, lose one time. No successes. Eh. No matter what, I'm losing health. Two time, and then I can end, move one space and end the turn, or just don't move. Ugh. Well, all right, I only get two dice because of lights out, but I have two close calls. And if I can just move two spaces, I'm in the closet. Then I might be trapped in the closet for a while. Ah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I only need to move two spaces. So, all right, well, I'm just going to discard the other walk and close call to turn that into one success. So I lose one time and move up to two spaces and I can take one I can take up to two victims with me if I move into their space the question is do I want to well if it's anything like the last card this victim would move on to me anyway at the very least currently that's a meat shield for me if the uh, poltergeist comes over to my spot okay so sprint and those got used now I'm down to just two search cards and my close call, but I get three dice again because I'm not trying to move. Uh, I get an item as long as I get at least one success, but I will lose one time. Ah, no successes. Shoot. No successes. I can raise the horror level by two and lose two time, but I still get to take the item card or no item raise it by one and lose two time. No. But I did get one three. Uh, I can try to re-roll one, but then I only have one card left. Or I just discard both of these to turn that into a success, which I really think I need to do that. All right. So one success, I get to take the top item, 
from the closet, which is the ancient text, which is uh, yeah, not really useful for me right now. <laughs> uh, but I, and I don't get to look at what's underneath. Oh well. And it's going to take two turns before I can search again, because I don't get to buy anything yet, or buy any searches yet. Well, that sucked. Okay. Uh, that was not a good turn. Well, now I get to buy weak attack. That's cost zero. And then I have three points. I don't need to move yet, so sprint. No, I don't need that. Um, yeah, I don't want to do any guards yet. Improvise costs three. If I play that, two successes, then for the rest of the action phase, after I use this, all threes and fours count as successes. So then each die has a two and three chances of a, su of, uh, of a success. Uh, if I only get one success, well, that applies for just one roll. Or I can get distraction for three points. Do some more horror level roll uh, lowering. Um, it's going to take two turns to until I can really do anything. Hmm, what do I want? Well, all right. So next turn, all I'm going to have is weak attack, which I probably won't get to use, and then one of these. <laughs> um, I'm going to get lots of time, so. I'll have the six. If I buy improvise, I won't even be using it, so I'll have six time to buy stuff. Uh, distraction, I probably won't want to use it yet until this goes up, so probably wouldn't be using that either. Either way, I'm going to have six time. I could buy anything. You know what? I'm going to buy improvise for now. And just hang on to it for a bit. <sighs> okay. So that cost all three of my time, so now we can reset that and put all these over here. Those are all free. Okay, poltergeist. Moves. Um, well, nearest victim or me would be that one right there, so moves toward that. And then doesn't attack, but there's nobody in the vic uh, poltergeist space, so it doesn't do anything there. And then terror card. What are we going to get this time? Something is coming through the wall. If there are no victims on the board, discard this and draw the next terror card. Okay. All victims panic. And then all victims that exit through a window are killed. <laughs> uh, nobody's in a window space, so that's not going to happen. But all victims panic. Oh, and then draw another event card. Ugh, goody. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, you know what? I think there's really not much point in carrying victims around with you unless um, you're going to be able to save them that turn. Uh, okay, let's see. All right, let's do the ones where there are two. So these two, three and two, um, three through six moves there. So, well, one or two doesn't move anywhere. So one of them stays in the closet and the other one moves over to here. All right, the two in the attic, one and five, uh, five and six move down here. Um, the other one doesn't go anywhere because there isn't a one anywhere. All right, so that one, that one, that one, that one already went. So let's do this one. One, uh, that'll go this way. Oh, here, we still have that one and this one. So that one, one again, that goes down here. And then the one that's by the poltergeist. I was gonna say, good, get away from the poltergeist, but it's, it'll still be two spaces away, so six moves over here. 
Actually, it might have been better if it moved down toward the poltergeist, because then the poltergeist wouldn't move next turn. Okay. So, what was my special ability if I saved six people? Oh yeah, choose an action card and you always get five dice for that action card. That would be nice, but there are only seven victims, so unless some other terror cards do some more victims. Oh, it's not my turn yet. We have a new event card. Or an event does some more victims. Um, I don't think I'm rescuing six, especially if I don't find a flashlight or a candle. Clingy victims. You must have at least one victim follow you, if able. Okay, so. <clears throat> yeah, in this setting where uh, maybe you don't want to take victims with you, well, now it says I have to take one victim with me when I move, if possible. All right. Well, all I have is improvise and weak attack. I'm not using either of those. So I'm just going to sit here and do nothing. And now I have six time. Um, let's see. If I buy all five of the free cards, that's seven. And then I definitely want both searches. That's four points. That leaves me with two more, and I can buy one more card. This would be a good time for improvise. Um, guard, sprint are the only things I can buy for two or I can just buy one of the close calls and waste one point or I guess not get one of these and then buy both close calls what am I not going to want So after I search twice, I might, I might know all the items that are in the closet, and then I can leave the closet and head toward the attic. In which case, I will want to move. I need to go three spaces to get to the attic. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to buy the sprint and the two searches, and that gives me... 10 cards, okay. All right, so my turn's done, reset that to six. Put discards back over there. All right, now it is the poltergeist turn, so poltergeist targets nearest victim or final girl, which is this one right here. Actually, it's this one or that one. Um, hmm. I mean, it's worse for me if the poltergeist is moving toward me. So, yeah, all right, we'll have the poltergeist go that way. Kills this one. This goes up one, and now we reveal the dark power. Stiff wind. So the poltergeist farts. All of your moves uh, of two or more spaces are reduced by one space. Come on. Movement is just terrible. Good thing I bought Sprint. All right, so the poltergeist farts are making it harder to move. And Lights Out is making it harder to move. Um, all right, so that was from this. Now we need a tarot card. It's a fake. Discard a random item. Great. Ancient text. It's the only item I have. If you have no items, discard and draw the next tarot card. And then move target the nearest victim or final girl. Or target the nearest victim or final girl. Do one movement, one attack. Well, that's going to kill that one. And this will go up another one. Next one, the poltergeist kills. Four level goes up two. So I'm probably going to want to have distraction available for the turn after that. <laughs> or the focus cards right now, although I don't need them yet. 
All right. Okay, time to search. Twice. All right, so I get three dice. Oh, no, I was supposed to do improvise first. Shoot. Oh, well, I screwed that up. All right, well, I got no successes. I do need one, um, so I'm going to discard two cards. What do I not care about right now? You know what? I'm still going to not worry about short rest, although I'll be taking a chance. I might get killed. And then... Hmm. Focus? One of those? All right. Or weak attack. Uh, you know what? I want to keep focus for now, just in case. Or, you know what? How about one of the focuses and weak attack? All right. We'll discard those to give me one success. I lose one time. And I get to take the top item, but I don't get to look at them both. Or look at the next two, which is too bad. All right. What's the next item in the closet? It is the knife. When you do an attack, you just add on one extra damage. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, search is over there. All right, before I do search, I want to improvise and hopefully get two successes so that all threes and fours will be uh, successes for the rest of this action phase. two successes. Alright, so all threes and fours are successes for the rest of this phase. So for search, and then moving, and then oh, I might even get to do a rest in there. Okay, so every die for the rest of this turn has a two and three chance of success instead of one and three. I like that. Alright, uh, I'm just going to put that right there to hopefully remind me. Okay, next search. Good, I should be able to look at both of those cards. All right, three successes. So three successes, take the top two item cards at the space, choose one, place the other on the top face up or on the bottom of the deck face down. Well, it'll be on top, so that'll be it. Ah, the candle and Mr. Floppy. Uh, ooh, was it a dark power? Yeah, it was a dark power, I think, that might make you need Mr. Floppy. Uh, if, no, if the dark power, this would go in your hands, if the dark power has been revealed, you may remove this from the game to ignore the effects of Carolyn, where are you? Which is probably a bad one. Ooh, then, yeah, but you have Carolyn, and then you have to put it back in an item stack. That would suck. Uh, if this card is discarded for any reason, shuffle it into the nearest item deck. But I really need the candle for movement, and I don't have any more search cards now. I'd have to stay here another two turns to be able to get both of these. Uh, I'm going to chance it and forget Mr. Floppy. So, but I know where Mr. Floppy is. Uh, so yeah, but I think it was one of those dark powers would have made it, so I also needed Mr. Floppy. All right. So I have the candle. Oh, it says once per action phase, you may move a victim from an adjacent space to your space. Um, okay. And I always have to move a victim with me if I can. And victims will follow me into a killer space. So if I move this way, this victim has to go with me. Okay. Next. All right, so I can move, move, move. I don't need focus. And I can rest to get some health back. So I want to go to the attic. And the poltergeist is nearby, so I probably want a nice meat shield while I'm doing searching. All right, well, let's use sprint. Although sprint will only let me move two spaces now. Walk will only let me move one space because of stiff wind. So I guess I'm going to need 
Well, I need at least one success on all three of these, but that's no problem. I'm rolling three dice now. Um, so currently, uh, whatever, one lights out is not taking effect anymore. I get three dice when I move, but one fewer space. Uh, well, let's use sprint first. Because I've improvised, that's two successes. So I lose one time, and I get to move up to two spaces instead of three. So move over to here, and now yeah, one more move, I can get up in the attic. All right, next, walk. Uh, two successes, move up to, well, two or one would have been the same thing. Lose one time, and I get to move one space. Oh, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Maybe I don't want to go to the attic. Because I can't search yet. I mean, I'm not going to be able to search next turn because I have to wait a turn before I can buy the cards. Oh, what does this do? A list of things in the... Immediately roll a die. Uh, one to two, garage. Three to four, closet. Five to six, attic. Reveal all the item cards in the associated deck. Ah, oh, this would have... Maybe I should have gone to the attic first. Uh, keeping their order the same. Then discard this card. Ooh. Yeah, it'll be nice. I can be in the attic and search, perhaps. Well, either one of these. Oh, right, right, right. No, but I have to roll a die. I might get unlucky. If I roll a three or four, it's closet, and I already know everything in the closet. Well, okay. But. Uh, it doesn't say it's a horror roll. Close call lets me re-roll a horror roll. That is not a horror roll. It just says immediately roll a die. Uh, but I'd have a two and three chance of um, finding, knowing where Carolyn is. Yeah, I guess I want to go into there. All right. Um, all right, so I only get to move one space. I mean, I could walk again, like I could, you know, take a couple victims with me and get over to here with the other walk and then try to actually rescue a couple people. But I also want to, I don't have much health. I need a meat shield for that poltergeist. Because poltergeist is going to be coming into me. Um, although I only have to take one victim with me. So I'll leave one, so that right now the poltergeist is only going to move to this space. Wait, wait, don't I have something else I can do? Oh, wait, that's right. Once per action phase, you may move a victim from adjacent space to your space. Mm. Maybe before I move, I tell this one to move over here? I don't know. Maybe that's a good idea, maybe not. And then I had to take one with me. All right. Or I could have moved the one in the attic down here before I moved into there. Uh, nah, let's do it the other way. All right, meat shield. Um, okay, so walk got used. And I still have short rest, focus, and walk. I don't need to use walk or focus. I may as well do short rest and try to get some health back. If at some point I lose one more health, then I also get to roll an extra die. As long as I have just one health. But uh, with that victim stuff, that the victims might hurt me, that's too risky to go down to that. I think I'd rather have full health. So short rest. That is two successes, even without improvise. So I get two health back. Can't go beyond maximum health, which is four. All right, so improvise. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to hang on to focus and walk. Or I could discard them to get two more time. You know, I may as well do that with walk because I don't need it next turn. So, well, let's see. All right, so improvise is discarded. I have three time. Is that right? Yeah, I did a search. Or did I do two searches? 
think I might have missed one time I was supposed to lose. Sprint, I lost a time. Walk, I lost a time. Search, I lost a time. And search, I lost a time. Nothing gained me any time. So yeah, I should be down at two. Okay, so. Uh, horror level is going to go up two. So I kind of want distraction. So I think maybe I will discard walk to gain one extra time. So that I can buy distraction for three. And then I should be good on getting this back down to zero. And I'm going to have lots of time. I also might want to start getting some defensive cards. The poltergeist could target me at soon, or a terror card can make the tol poltergeist target me. Although right now it's still only doing one damage, but it'll go to two in a minute. Okay, I'm all done. So back, I spent my three, go back to six, and then put these in the store. Oh, short rest got used as well. Improvise. That improvise was nice. Unfortunately, I used it. This is free. Uh, used it too late. Okay. I'm all done. So now Poltergeist does a movement. These people are nearest, so targets this space, does movement, does one attack. So one's dead. This goes up one. So now Poltergeist does two damage, which really only matters if I'm getting attacked. And horror level goes up two. All right, that's unfortunate. Down to two dice. But distraction, no matter what, you get to lower it at least one. Okay, uh, although maybe I want to wait until the next turn. Hmm. Well, I'm not done with that yet. Time for a tarot card. It's broken. Place the broken ladder token. Uh, covering the ladder on the board. Oh, well that sucks. What I was hoping was to just, well, I don't know, maybe that wouldn't have been quick. Uh, I can go one, two, fall down here, three, four, five, six, seven to get to the garage, or uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to get to the garage, or it would have been um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, I guess it doesn't matter. It's going to take seven spaces to get to the garage. Oh, actually, I think I was hoping Caroline would be in here and I get, could get Caroline and then just climb down the ladder and escape and win. Uh, it's not too much farther to get over to that one. Let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five to get to there. That's one more space. Uh, all right, so it's broken. Place the broken ladder token on there. The ladder may no longer be used, and spaces connected are no longer considered adjacent. Yes, and raise this another one. Good thing I got distraction. Okay. And poltergeist next turn, unless victims move, is just going to sit there. Uh, I don't get to really do anything other than trying to raise the, lower the horror level. So... Let's see. Um, oh, I forgot to. Oh, no, I didn't. OK. Uh, I may have forgotten to panic victims on one of the turns. Um, all right, so now, after the killer phase, did a terror card. Now we're in the panic phase. 
if there are any victims in the killer spot, which there is, those and and any victims died, which yes, one did, then those victims panic. But this might be the first time there was a victim on the poltergeist spot after the poltergeist killed one. All right, so one pa victim panics, rolls a two, and goes ah, over here. Okay, my turn. All I'm gonna do is try to lower that. Unfortunately, I only get two dice. I'm going to lose a lot of time. I may only have free cards next time. All right, I really need at least one success on this one. Ah, good. Got one success. I mean, two would have been great, but I'll take one. Uh, and I gain one time. All right, that's good. No successes. I could have still lowered it one, but I would have had to lose four time. So that one success was a net of five time. All right, focus. Still two dice. And it's going to take three kills for this to go up again from that, although tarot card could make it go up. Ah, damn. No successes. I lose two time. I don't get to lower the horror level. Since I have nothing, I can trade in. Oh, why did I why did I play that? I should have just waited until I had more cards so that I could turn this into a success. That was stupid. <sighs> oh well. Too late now. Um, yeah, distraction I think I would have played anyway, because no matter what I would have been able to lower it. And I got some time out of it. Then I just lost two. Nah, it was dumb. All right, uh, so I get my free cards. That's five cards, and then I have five time. I need, I need search. Well, that's if I buy both of those, that's four points. And then close call. Yeah, I, I just need to do search as much as I can. So yeah. Free cards, search, search, close call. That'll cost five. So now we can reset that and put these back. No, you're there. there. Hmm. All right, I'm all done. So now it's killer phase. Moves to the nearest victim. Or final girl, and well, since there are more victims in here, Poltergeist comes and joins us here, kills one. Ooh, that other one's gonna panic. Might be out of there. Uh, I might need to move. Well, no, even if this one runs away, I can use the, um, uh, whatever, candle to bring it back. <coughs> All right, this goes up one, and then tarot card. Poltergeist can now move three spaces. Oh. The ground is shaking. Place the poltergeist in your space. Already done. Moves toward the nearest. Oh, no, no, no. Doesn't move. Targets um, anybody in the space. Fortunately, I have a meat shield and does one attack. So, all right, this one's dead now. Great. Well, if I'm really successful with my two searches, I might be able to know everything that's in the deck. Or actually, no. As soon as I get this, I also might know. And then I could just run away. And then, if you take any damage, all of your moves during the next action phase are panicked. Hmm, interesting. I did not take damage, so I'm good. Um, killed another one. Did I raise this again? No. <sighs> okay. Uh, nobody panics, because no, there are no victims left in the attic. And upkeep, don't need to do anything yet. Okay. All right, I'm definitely going to need some defensive cards next time I purchase some. I 
fine. Even if I just move one space, I can use the candle to move the victim to here and have a meat shield again. All right. Uh, so I've a re-roll. Lots of cards to discard. And two searches. We're searching. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I only have two dice right now. We're focusing. I just need one success, and I get three dice again. Well, all right. Well, I can discard two cards to turn that into a success. Weak attack. I'll lose one time and lower this one if I discard two cards. Weak attack, and I don't need short rest. I'm full health. Okay. Three dice again. Now we search, and then I can only move two spaces with walk if I still have both of these. Uh, two spaces total because of the farting poltergeist. All right, come on, two successes. Ah, one. Uh, oh, you know what, though? Yeah, it's this item, though. Yeah. All right, I'm going to take this. And I lose one time. Don't get to take the top two and look at the other one. Okay, so immediately roll a die. As long as it's not three or four, I'm good. Five. Okay, five is the attic, so we get to see everything else that's in the attic. Lucky dice. Yeah, there's Carolyn. And then energy drink. Okay, so if I do search, if I get two successes, I can take Carolyn because I get to draw the top two cards. Because you have to leave them in the same order. All right. It's gone. I have one reroll and two cards I can discard. But then I don't get to move away from here. And the poltergeist could just kill me. So I don't want to discard these. I want to move out of that space and bring over a meat shield. All right, three dice. Come on, one success. Oh, actually, I do have close call as well. I could discard those two to turn that into a success, and then I get Carolyn. Or I could use this to re-roll, eh, say that one, but then I only have a one in three chance of success. I don't like that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna discard both of these, walk. I'll be able to move no matter what, even if I fail. All right, so two successes, I lose one time. I get to take the top two cards and pick which one I want. Well, I think we know which one it is. Carolyn, and then what does energy drink do? Well, lucky dies is discard to reroll any or all of your dice. Energy drink, so I can put this on top or on the bottom. Discard this card during the action phase and choose three time or move one space. Um, I'm gonna put lucky dice on the bottom because, I mean, I doubt I'm gonna search any more in there, but if I do. I want to just be able to move without being hampered. All right, so what does Carolyn do? Nope, I'm, I'm carrying Carolyn, or just one of my hands is probably holding her hand. But Mr. Floppy said to hide. When Carolyn joins you, remove all minor dark power cards. There aren't any. From the game, you must escape with Carolyn to win the game. Carolyn cannot be killed or discarded for any reason. You cannot place her in your backpack. All right. So Carolyn, well, we can put Carolyn here. But currently, Poltergeist is going to target me, so I need to move. Walk and get a meat shield with the candle. Uh, so I get three dice, and even if I get two successes, I only get to move one space. I got one. I got, did get two successes. So, well, two or one would have been move one space, lose one time, and use the candle to bring the meat shield over. 
lock is done, and I am all out of cards. So I'm done. I only have two time. Uh, guard, yes. Uh, although, I could also do sprint. So let's see. Well, whatever I buy, it's going to be the only card I have. The Poltergeist is going to be on here. He's going to kill this right away, and then tear a card. It might be another attack. So I might want guard for that, although I can't be killed yet. Or I may want sprint, so I can try to move away. I can move to here. Oh, no, I don't want to go that way. Well, I'll move this way, and then the Poltergeist uh, will target victim first. We'll prioritize that with the movement. If I can get at least two spaces away, but I need three successes for that because of stiff wind. If I only move, if I'm only able to go one space, then Poltergeist will still move toward me. Mm. And chance of two successes is not high, so. I think I need guard, and I'm just going to have to stay there for a turn and defend. Okay. Reset that to six. Oh, I also get my free card. But it's a focus. All right, well. I don't need to buy searches anymore. And free cards. Looks like I'm going to need the focus because this is about to go back into the white. All right, so Poltergeist moves toward the nearest victim or final girl space. So moves into here with us and then does an attack. Prioritizes victim, so victim's dead. Bloodlust goes up one. So now Poltergeist can move four spaces on a movement, and then tear a card. Oh, come on. Carolyn, where are you? If Carolyn is not with you, discard this and draw the next one. Shuffle Carolyn into the item deck near uh, item deck of the nearest one. Do not reveal the top card of the deck. Um, back in the attic. That sucks. So now I have to go find Carolyn again. Great. That was bad. Uh, so attic. Well, these are already revealed. So I guess I'll know where Carolyn is. It says don't reveal her. Don't reveal the, do not reveal the top card. I don't know. Maybe I do need to turn them back over. I'm not sure. Because, yeah, the um, yeah, reveal all item cards. It says reveal. It doesn't say you have to turn them back over. But this one. Uh, I don't know. I think it's just going to go face down, but these are already revealed. So I think it's okay to do it that way. Uh, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to roll a die to see where this is going. One, two, top, etc. Six. Oh, great. On the bottom. I'm going to have to do at least two searches to get her. And then uh, energy, energy drink, one through three on top, since it's getting shuffled. Two. So that's on top. Great. All right, I think I'm kind of screwed. All right, well, it's my turn. Um, Going to use focus. No, well, upkeep, no panicking. And if I had taken Mr. Floppy instead of the candle, 
Although that would have, mm, I needed that the candle a couple times already. Well, yeah, for movement. Uh, if I'd taken Mr. Floppy, I would have been able to ignore that. So it might have been worth it to, but I would have had to wait in the closet two more turns to be able to search again and get it. I don't know. Well, and then this would have come up before I even got to Carolyn. So it wouldn't have done anything. It would have made me draw another tarot card. All right, but I, yeah, I might be screwed now. Anyway, focus. I only have two dice. One success. All right, I'll take that. So back in the green and there. And I guess the only other thing that's the only time this will go back up anymore is if tarot cards make it happen. There, back to three dice. All right. But I have five points. So I'm buying the free cards. That gives me six. I'm going to buy the other guard because I need these. Uh, that's four. And then, oh no, that's two. Uh, oh, I need search. No, oh, but I, I really need both of these. Okay, I'm not buying the other guard yet. Because I need both searches. Oh. Well, uh, hang on. Let's see. Well, it's going to be a close call, I'm sure, because I'll have one point left over. All right, so next turn. It's going to take me one walk to get up here. And then I can search twice. If I'm lucky, I can get Carolyn. Well, basically, if I get two successes on one of these, I'll get Carolyn. Then I could use another walk to come back to here. But whether I'm, well, whichever one of these two spaces I'm in, Poltergeist is coming to me because I'm closer than that victim. Uh, and it's whoever's closest. So I guess I may as well move back to here. And either way, the poltergeist is going to get to attack me. So I'm going to need a guard right now. And then, um, well, two if this does another attack. Although I can take one hit. Yeah, I don't need one yet. I'll buy it next turn. All right, so two searches and close call, that's my five points. Probably gonna, well, I am gonna need this right now, although I guess I don't have to do it, use it. I could let the poltergeist hit me, but that would be silly. Uh, all right, so that was five. Now reset that, this goes back there. That was the only card I used, yeah. Hang on, there's a buzzing noise over there. Now it's gone. All right. Uh, yeah, all right, so I bought those. Got that reset. Poltergeist turn attacks me, but I play guard if I get, let's see, only doing two damage. So I, I only need one success and I won't take any hits. All right, I got two successes. It says ignore all damage. Well, all right. One success was reduced damage by two, which still would have been zero. No successes uh, reduce damage by one to a minimum of one. So eh, I would have taken one damage. Uh, but now I'm going to want another guard next turn, although I might get attacked again right here. Let's see. Terror card. It doesn't look like it. Corporeal form. Whoa. A behemoth appears. You may play action cards that inflict damage if you wish. It has two health. Then, if the behemoth is still alive, um, 
And I do have weak attack and a knife, so I can do two damage if I get at least one success. All right, so then if the behemoth is still alive, you take damage equal to the killer's attack value plus one. So I'll take three damage. You may defend as normal. Oh, I don't have any defense cards anymore. If you take damage, discard an item of your choice, Ugh. and then the behemoth disappears. Okay, good. I have weak attack. I definitely want that. All right, so I, j I just need one success, and I get three rolls, and I have lots of cards I can discard, and a close call, so shouldn't be a problem. Although, I, if I only get one success, I will take one damage. I got one success, and I can't do anything with these other than use a reroll, but I don't think that's worth it. So I will lose one health, and do one damage plus one from the knife, so you're dead. If the behemoth is still alive, then we do this. Nope. All right. Um, yeah, let's just go on there. Or did, No, no, no. It goes in the discard. Yeah, it goes in the discard. Because I already had to put cards back over here. All right. That's okay. I didn't need weak attack anyway. All right, but yeah, there are actually some stuff, things to use attack against. Plus the victims earlier when they hurt me. Bastards. Um, tear card, all done. My turn. All right. So, oh, I don't have Carolyn anymore, but Carolyn's gonna be up here in the attic in a minute. Hopefully right now, I need to walk. I can only move one space because of the farting poltergeist. Uh, I don't need to focus. Although, uh, well, we'll see. At the end of the turn, if I still have focus, I'll try to move this down to zero, just in case Terror Card makes it go up. All right, so three dice to walk. Yeah, one success. Yeah, one or two doesn't matter. I get to move one either way and lose one time. All right, next. Search. I need one of these to be two successes. Got one from that, so I get to take the top one. I can gain three time or move one space. Uh, okay, that could come in, that'll definitely come in handy. Oh, and I lost one time. <sighs> really need two here, other wise it'll take two more turns to get Carolyn, because I won't have any search cards next turn. So I really need two successes here. Or just one success and a three or a four. I'm fine with that. Ah, two successes, all right. so. Don't even need to discard anything. Okay, so I get to take the top two cards, pick which one I want, Carolyn. And there she's in my hand again. And I lose one time. Search is done. And then Lucky Dice is just going to go back there. All right. So now I can walk to go right back to the Poltergeist. Uh, I only have three time right now. That's fine. I'll lose one, and I'll have two. I can buy a guard. Hopefully that's enough. All right, walk. Ah. All right, well, I only need one success, so I'm going to have to discard two cards. Short rest, I guess, and close call. I want to hang on to focus, I think. Although I don't want to play it because I could lose time. Well, so I'm losing one time and moving. Or, you know what? I probably should have just stayed there so the poltergeist comes. Well, no, the poltergeist can move four spaces. It doesn't matter where the poltergeist is. 
Poltergeist will be able to reach me from anywhere, uh, no matter how much I move. Well, I guess, yeah, because even if I did, s well, okay, unless I got two sprints and two walks and moved at least five spaces, so got two successes on one of these, and then got my two walks in there, and yeah, unless I moved five spaces, Poltergeist will reach me. So anyway, um, oh, that's right, I also have energy drink. Ooh, I could use focus, and if this goes, doesn't, uh, if I do lose time, I could use this to gain time. Hmm. But I also want to be able to move one space. That might be important. Let's see. Uh, but yeah, I think I am discarding these with the walk to move down there now. I have two time. So I could use this and possibly get more time if I get two successes. Or lose a the time, then I'd have to use energy drink. Uh, if I lost, well, if I get no successes, it's two. Well, I'll have, well, I'll have three or four time, so I could buy one or two guards. Well, two guards or one in a close call. Though, I might want sprint too. Uh, for sure, I need one guard right now. All right, so how far do I need to move? One, two, three, four. I just need to move four spaces. I'm going to get another focus next turn, plus, yeah, whatever. I think I should save the energy drink. I really want to be able to use that to move. And then, yeah, next turn, I'll just be chilling. Well, I'll buy the other guard. I might need to get retaliate, too. Eh, no, I'm not going to have enough time, because I also want to be able to sprint. <laughs> I just need to get four spaces. So two walks and two sprint cards, that pretty much guarantees I get out. Uh, but I'm going to have to survive two turns to get to that point. All right, well, I have a guard. I'll have six time next turn. Should have six time next turn, so I can buy the other guard and two sprints. Then, if I'm still alive, it should be guaranteed that I make it here. Okay, that's the plan. All right, so not playing anything else. I'm buying the guard for two. Put that back to six and put all these. Oh, when I get the fo other focus card, All right, hopefully now I don't need search again, unless there's another one of these stupid Carolyn, where are you cards. Which I guess is possible. Okay, uh, Poltergeist turn, tax me, I use guard. Or, you know what, if there's another thing like this behemoth here, this would have done three damage to me. Poltergeist is only gonna do two, which will give me another die. So maybe I should just let the poltergeist hit me and hold on to the guard. Yeah, yeah I think I'm going to chance it. I'm going to let the poltergeist hit me. This may be a horrible idea, but hey, now I get an extra die. That could have been a bad idea, although this has a one in three chance of still having more health in it if I do get killed by something. Oh, I don't like that. Uh, oh, target's a victim. That's good. 
The shadows are closing in. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next terror card. Otherwise, <sighs> horror level goes up two. I don't like that. But I still have three dice because I only have one health. Uh, target nearest victim. Do one movement of four spaces. Which, yeah. all right, it's two to go to there. Can the poltergeist move through that? That one-way thing? Hmm. Well, it's not going to matter because either way, it's one, two, three, four. Can get here anyway. Uh, and yeah, kill that. So every victim's now dead. Horror level went up to. That sucked. I want to use these to get the horror level back down, but if I lose any time, ah, damn things buzzing again. If I lose any time, then I can't buy both sprints and the guard. Although I still have one guard. That's right. I also have energy drink. If I really needed, I could gain time from that. So that's true. I don't actually need both sprints. I can use energy drink, one sprint, two walks. That'll get me up. Okay. All right, but let, hang on. Uh, I killed that. This goes up to there. Oops. And now, anytime bloodlust goes up, but there are no more victims to kill. Wait, is it bloodlust just when a victim gets attacked, or is it also if I get attacked? Because it says, I take damage every time bloodlust goes up one now. All right, let me get rid of that buzzing. And just tell me about bloodlust. Blood, there we go, bloodlust. The killer will get stronger as the game goes on and more victims perish. Um, each time his victim is killed and any time you see the bloodlust icon, it means move it up. Uh, all right, so a victim is killed. It doesn't say if I get attacked. So, all right. So hopefully, hopefully no terror cards doing it. There's only one more. Great, gonna get the finale card soon. Ah, uh, that's bad. But that'll be after that. No, no, that, that's okay, because that'll be the last turn when I'm hopefully escaping. Uh, all right, so let's see, where am I? So we did the tarot card, killed that last victim, so now it's my turn. And I think I do want to use the focus cards. All right, choices. I could use these now to try to get back into the green. Should get back into the green. Just need one success each time. Yeah, at least one. Um, if, if they both have at least one success, I'll be back in the green. But if it's only one success each time, I'll lose two time. And then I can buy the other guard and a sprint. And I'll have sprint, walk, walk, energy drink. That's enough to get out. If I get two successes, I'll gain some time. Or I can just hang on to these, but no, I think I think I want to use these now. All right, so focus. Uh, yeah, three dice because of the one extra. Nice, three successes. Although the third is superfluous. All right, so I gain two time. That's excellent, and this goes down one. All right, so even if I fail on this one, I'll still have six time. I just won't be in the green. All right, just need one success. Come on, although this could make it go up again. Two successes again. 
Ooh, two more time. I have 10, and this is now in the green. That was a good turn. Ooh. So, 10 time. Oh, you know what? I could get retaliate and guard for six points, plus both sprints. But that's 10 points. Then I have three defensive cards. And then uh, that would be five cards, and then I can get the four free cards that are left. That gives me nine. Uh, yeah. Or maybe not that. I don't need both sprints. And I probably don't need three defensive cards. I need one for that, and then who knows from this. Because <sighs> I could get Improvise again. Instead of retaliate, I get improvise and close call. And then if I play this right away, threes and fours are successes for the rest of the action phase. Uh, that's basically just to move. Ah. But what if there's another thing like the behemoth? I may want something I can attack it with. All right, so if I do this instead, although that's right, I don't need two sprints. I only need to be able to move three spaces plus energy drink, because I'm gonna get two walks, so those will move me one space each. This will move me one. One sprint will move me one. So I don't need both of those. I only need to move. Yeah, one, two. Oh, I only need to move three spaces? Oh, no. I'm right there. I need to move one, two, three, four. All right, so so far I have eight. So maybe I also buy the close calls. Can I have that many cards? Yeah, that would give me 10. Uh, two close calls for re-rolls or discards. Probably the best way to go. So two guards, an attack just in case, and enough movement to get out of there. All right, that's the plan. That'll be all 10 time from that great roll. And you know what? Just in case it makes me discard an item, maybe I should use the energy drink right now. And move one. Okay. Because there was something earlier that said I had to discard an item. I lost. What did I lose? The ancient text. Ooh, you know what? This would have come in handy if, say, you had two health. You could just use this once to gain two time and get an extra die. Alright, reset that to six. And these are over here. All right, Poltergeist moves four spaces, comes to me, doesn't attack, but I will guard. Ooh, Poltergeist does three damage now. I forgot about that part. So I need two successes, not just one. But I get four dice. And I have these can each reroll a die, or I have lots of cards I can discard. I really want to have all these. All right. Another guard. I wonder, can you use more than one guard for the same attack? Well, let's just roll. Oh, that sucks. <clears throat> that was not good. I'm going to have to discard four cards. Or, hang on. Yeah, can I use more than one guard? Although, I probably don't want to, because I might need one here. But still, I want to find out. All right. Um, defending. Some action cards have a blue background, blah, blah, blah. Each reaction card can only defend against a single attack, yes. But you may use multiple reaction cards one at a time against the same attack, if you wish. 
Okay. If I turn one of those into a success, I, I do still take one. Actually, no, there'd be no reason to do that. All right, if I take the failure, I can just play the other guard and try to block it. That's one thing I can do. Uh, yeah, there's no reason to get one success because then Poltergeist still does one damage and that is this one. Or even if I take three damage, it's still just this one. I turn this over if it has hearts on the other side. I still have health, but it doesn't carry over the damage from the attack. So there's no reason to do one success. So I can do nothing and just let the poltergeist uh, hit me and take my chances with that. That would be stupid. So I can play the other guard. Or, yeah, I can do nothing with this one and play the other guard. Ah, uh, yeah, because I'd have to discard four cards to get a success. And what do I have that I don't need? Weak attack. Oh, I forgot I had weak attack, too. Shoot. Maybe I didn't want to buy Furious Strike. Uh, uh, yeah, short rest. I can give myself health. but All right, but I do have four cards I could discard. But then I have nothing for these. And with walk, well, I need one success, otherwise I take damage. Same with sprint. So all of these need at least one success. With Then I'd only have Furious Strike well, and Guard available to me, although I still might need something from this Terror card. Ugh. Or I use the other guard now, but then I have no defense in case there's another attack here. But if it's something, well, if it's Poltergeist attacks me, then I can't do anything. If it's another one like uh, this, corporeal form, I will get to attack it and should kill it before it gets a chance to hit me. All right, how many of these have had the killer attack? Two, three. Eh. Out of the nine I've drawn, three of them had the killer attack. If I take my chances with the other guard, I could have another shit roll like that, and then I'm in the same position. Well, all right, if I keep these, I have two discards. All right, I'm going to discard all four of these to turn that into two successes and ignore all damage. Ugh. But now there's the tarot card. All right, so I still have a guard, Furious Strike, and then my three movement cards, and I need... Well, actually, Sprint could move me two spaces, so I may only need two of these. Great, I get attacked. But I still have my other guard. All right, everything was flying around. Ah, horror level goes up. I only have three dice. That sucks. Uh, place poltergeist with the closest victim or in your space if there are no victims, and then yeah, attack somebody in the space. And then the finale card will come out, but that's at the end. I'll get a turn before the, anything happens from this. All right, so it's this guard... I only have two dice now. I need three successes. Great. Had I used the other guard, though, now I'd have nothing. I would just take damage there. <sighs> none. Well, none and one are the same for this, basically, so... I could discard all four of these and take no damage, but then I have nothing to do next turn and the poltergeist will just kill me. Uh, well, I'll get two focus cards. 
I mean, I know I won't get them. I'll be purchasing those. That'll be the only thing I'll be doing, plus other cards. But I won't get to actually take any actions. <sighs> so, I mean, I'm screwed if... Um, I'm screwed if I use these cards. I need to get out this turn. Oh, no, I'd be buying Retaliate, so I'd have one defensive card. I'd be buying two Focus and Retaliate. So I would have yeah, one defense. Oh, and there's no more Terror cards, so it all depends on what this is. But this could say something like Attack Twice. In which case, I'll only be able to defend against one of them. So... And it will take two turns before I can move if I discard all these. Well, I could buy Sprint and move one time, but it'll take two turns for me to escape. All right, so options are discard all of these. And then on my turn, I'll have one defensive card. And hopefully this doesn't say attack twice. Or take my chances with this. I only have a one in three chance of still being alive. I think my chances are probably better with this. So yeah. I'm going to spend all four of these cards. That was terrible. I had ten cards. I had to spend all ten to defend against these attacks. <sighs> all right. Now I have nothing. Uh, so upkeep. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Also, these are in the discard pile. I won't get to buy them next turn. I can buy retaliate, but then I won't get to buy any guard cards on the next turn. I'll have no defense. No, no, no. So yeah, this no, this is no good. Right, uh, I'll buy Retaliate. These will still be in the discard. And then, um, okay, in my next turn, I'll buy Retaliate and Focus. And then, whatever, a two point card, maybe Sprint. Then these will go over there. Poltergeist will attack. I'll have Retaliate. Well, no, then on the next turn, I'm buying those. No, no, this is fine. I'm not thinking right. <sighs> okay, um, yeah, yeah, take the chances with this. All right, you go there. Now we're in upkeep phase. Reveal finale if there are no tarot cards left. Uh, okay. Oh, no, all zero action cards now cost one time. Actually, that's probably not a big big deal, well, other than the focus that I want to use to get that down. Eh, okay. Place the poltergeist in your space, target nearest victim or final girl, and do one attack. Okay, all right. You know what? This is not bad. Nothing is easy. That's actually all right. I still have a chance. Okay, my turn. I have no cards to play, so I'm not going to do anything other than purchase six points worth of stuff. These are free retaliate and then I guess sprint that's all I got to do buy those because I definitely need retaliate all right but retaliate I still need three successes because with only one success I only reduce damage by two it's doing three damage so eh. if I don't get three successes I have to turn this over anyway All right, uh, I bought my cards, now these go back. So I have to survive this attack with Retaliate, and then, well, next turn I get to buy both the guards. And then I have to survive one more attack with two guards, and then finally I'll be purchasing all this stuff. Well, and then finally I'll get to try to run away. All right, so I have to survive two rounds, but the big one is right now I need two successes. I only get three dice. Although, if, if I get a, 
one success and one that I can turn into a success, that'll be good enough. I'll just toss the two. No, focus and sprint. Anyway, all right. Put these back. Sprint. Uh, no, I already put one there. Okay. Fury strike. You know what? I've almost never been using these to re-roll. They keep being discards. Okay. Poltergeist turn. Moves here. Attacks me. I use retaliate. I need two successes. And I got zero. Well, zero and one would have been the same. All right. Nothing happens. So am I still alive? Nope, I'm dead. Oh. <sighs> Those three defensive rolls rolled a total of uh, 11 dice and did not get one star. So I had to spend eight cards, and then this time I don't even have an option. Yeah, I have nothing that can reroll. Uh, Could have used the lucky dice. Could have. If I had this. But that would have required sticking in the attic a couple more turns. But if, yeah, if I had that, I could have discarded that and roll again. And hey, I would have made it and survived one more round. But nope, I'm dead. Oh, the poltergeist got me. Oh, no, poltergeist is still alive. I'm dead. I guess maybe Carolyn's dead too. Well, good. At least I don't win every time. But, but that was all because of a couple horrible turns, particularly those guard cards. I was rolling four dice, too, and had to spend eight cards. Okay. You know what? This one's out, and since I didn't succeed, let's do this one again. It'll be a quick setup. All right, Carolyn's not around yet. Ladder's not busted. Uh, this goes down there. We need a new card for each of these. Get free cards. I'm going to use Alice again. So these, let's see. So down in the uh, garage was the Lucky Rabbit's foot, the old revolver, Alice's shotgun, and the Ritual Dagger. So the shotgun actually isn't really going to be useful for this, I don't think. I don't think there's a time I would have used this. So... I mean, I'll leave it in there. Well, the, the shotgun or Alice's shotgun is going to be in the deck. Uh, Mr. Floppy and Carolyn. And then where are the rest of the items? There they are. All right. So, yeah, the shotgun or... Wait a minute. Yeah, leave the shotgun out. The shotgun or Alice's shotgun, one of them is in here to have a chance of being an item, regardless. So may as well leave Alice. Well, no, let me. Just so I don't have to separate it later. If I get the shotgun and there's actually a time I want to use it, we'll just pretend it's Alice's shotgun. Uh, I think the difference was... Yeah, this costs two cards. Alice's shotgun only costs one. Okay, need a new setup card. Ooh, 
three in the attic. The killer's in the closet. All right, I started the foyer, so I think I'm gonna go to the garage. Uh, killer's in the attic. Poltergeist, no, oh, sorry. Poltergeist is in the closet. There are three victims in the attic. Uh, one there, one there. Uh, one here, one there, one in the garage, and two in the ballroom. Oh, wait, how many were there last time? Three, there were eight. This time it's two. This time it's ten. Mm. Okay, so this time if the victim, or if the poltergeist kills all those, I will take a couple damage. So I might want to rescue a couple. If it's if there's a good opportunity for it. Like right now it's pretty easy. If you move three spaces, you could rescue those too. But I don't want to rescue six. Let's see, so it takes one, two, three, four. Yeah. Eight, and then any beyond eight, I will take the damage. And discard the next terror card. That part's bad too. <sighs> And there are 10. So yeah, I might want to save two. But we'll see. All right, I uh, need a finale card. And I gotta say, so far, this game's pretty fun. And, I mean, strategy is gonna be very different on each one. Having to fight the poltergeist is completely different from Hans, the butcher. And the different locations, too. Yeah, I mean, last one, Camp Happy Trails, there's kind of a circle with some other spaces in the middle, and this is different. So yeah, I think there's more variety than there was with uh, Hostage Negotiator, although it had some. The different um, kidnappers. Uh, some of them were very different from other ones. But yeah, really liking this. Uh, okay, got my free cards. Uh, Alice is there. We need items set up and then ready to go. Uh, this starts at three. Think, oh, I need health. All right, so I need a random one of these again. I really wish these were, I don't know, something that would be easier to mix up. Yeah, here, how about we shuffle? Without the risk of having them flip over, and then you just have to start over. And I'm going to take that one. Oh, and then event cards and terror cards need to be shuffled. I still haven't seen any minor dark powers. So I need 10 items. Well, those are going to be the top ones. Whoops, that was too many. Okay. This should have been seven. Right, and then these are going to go under those. May as well turn these over. Uh, old revolver, that's really not useful at all. Lucky dice, yeah, that's useful. And a trash can lid, ooh, what does that do? Ignore a damage, you can do it three times. Okay. And I guess if you needed, you could do them all at once. That would have really come in handy last time. Oh, 
and the garage is where I am. It has the worthless item on top. It's worthless because the revolver you have to attack from an adjacent space, and it can't attack the poltergeist. Well, hopefully the first time I search, I get... Because, um, yeah, I'm going there first. Hopefully the first time I search, I get two successes so that I can just put the revolver on the bottom and take the next one instead. Although it could also be worthless. Darn, too bad the uh, list that let me look at a stack isn't there already. All right. Yeah, I think I'm going to the garage. Anything else? Events. I have to do events and terror. Pushed to the edge. Roll a die for each victim in a window space. If the roll is a failure, that victim jumps and is killed. What do you mean a failure? Oh, I guess if it's not a star. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know what? That I actually want that to happen, because then this would only go up to there. Although. I mean, then there are two fewer meat shields around. It's probably better to have more meat shields. All right, well, I expect to lose one and, one and a third victims here, and then this can be discarded. All right, so uh, top one, bottom one. I lost them both. But the poltergeist did not kill a victim, so poltergeist does not get any bloodlust. Well, at least I don't have lights out again for now. The only drawback with playing this a bunch of times would be then you know what all these cards are, the events and the tarot cards. I mean, I didn't look at any of them before playing, so so far everything's new. And you play a new um, new killer and location, and hey, now you got new ones. You have a whole new set of new ones. So, no idea what to expect. Although, now I could get some repeats. Playing this a second time. Let's see, rolls five. Okay, all set. Well, like usual, start off with focus, try to get an extra die. Although, right away, that one's dead. So I'm going to go right back into the white, but, well, hopefully at least for um, moving over to the garage, I'll be able to have three dice. Although, then I can only buy one search if um, I don't gain some time from one of these. Well, I could also discard to get time. Yeah, all right, I'll be able to get both searches. Should be able to, mm, well, we'll see. All right, <sighs> I do need at least one success. Oh, come on. All right, well, if I discard two cards, I get one success, I lower it one, but I lose one time if I discard two more cards. Uh, then I actually gain two times, so I'll uh, really net three time from these two, but then I won't have anything for that one. No, and I can't walk. Uh, all right, well, I lose one time, and this goes down one. Next focus. Complete failure. Lose two time. I can't do anything. Great, that sucked. There's a one in nine chance of that. Uh, don't even get to discard to try to get into the white. And then immediately it's gonna go back to there. Eh, all right, 
Um, do I want to walk? So if I do walk, I'm going to lose time, and then I won't have enough as much stuff to do later. Currently, I only have three time, so I can only buy a search or maybe distraction to try to get that focus down. Yeah, that last one sucked. Maybe I try to walk once and buy one search, and then next turn I'll get to walk over and do one of the searches. Eh. If I fail, I move up to one space and get hurt and lose two time, or just lose two time. I think I'm just going to turn these in for two time and not move anywhere yet. And by distraction for three and uh, one of the twos or the two close calls. I'll buy the two close calls. Okay, reset that to six. These go over here. Well, that was uh, n not very useful. All right, reset that to six. Killer's turn. <clears throat> yeah, target nearest, that would be right here. Uh, do a movement, can move two spaces, so that's enough to get there, and do an attack, that's dead. Bloodlust goes up one, this goes up one. And then tear a card. Carolyn, where are you? If Carolyn is not with you, discard and draw the next tear card. I mean, it's good that this is out of the way, although, question is, is there more than one of these? I don't know. Um, Bad thing is, I have to draw another tarot card. It's coming, it's coming. Target the nearest victim, move three times. Mm. All right, well, it's going to go up here because there are three victims there, and each of those is one space away. No attack. Uh, oh, kill one victim in each space the killer passes through, including its current and final spaces. All right, well, we will kill one. All right, well, that's not too bad. Well, if it's targeting the nearest victim, there are only going to be two spaces with victims. Well, no, no, no. If it was already in a space with a victim, it wouldn't move at all. So this is silly. It should just say, kill one victim in the space, in the final space the killer ends up in. Because... It's after you do three movements, so a total of six movement, that then you kill one victim in each space the killer passes through. But, you know, if you move here, that's the first move. Well, now there are victims there. It's not, the poltergeist isn't going to move again. I don't know. That doesn't really make any sense. I was completely, completely wrong about movement, but I'm almost 100% certain I read... When the, if the poltergeist is targeting a victim, or if the killer is targeting a victim and is already in a space with a victim, it doesn't move. So that's weird. Uh, all right. But bloodlust goes up again, and dark power already. Oh, epic dark power. That sounds bad. Forgetting something? Oh, okay, I need Mr. Floppy. You may not win the game unless you reach an escape with Carolyn and the Mr. Floppy. So, you know what? That's not too bad. the last time this really restricted my movement and uh, yeah hampered me quite a bit 
Uh, this time, eh, it just means I have to find Mr. Floppy, which last time I found Mr. Floppy, I just didn't pick him up. And actually, this time it would have been, I wouldn't need Mr. Floppy because this card already came up. But now I do need Mr. Floppy. All right, eh, that's not horrible. Hopefully Mr. Floppy's in the garage. Hopefully they're both in the garage. That would be easy. I move over here, pick up Mr. Floppy and Carolyn, and then just exit, done. Uh, all right, but two victims are already gone. That's not good. And there are two victims that, well, no, they're going to panic. All right, so now that's done. Now we're on upkeep, so panic. Or we're panic phase, then upkeep. Uh, two victims. They will only move on a five or a six, otherwise they're going to stay there and just be easy prey. Great. Oh, they both move. But that just means Poltergeist is going to move down there and kill one of them. Would have been nicer if one of them moved and one of them stayed. Oh well. All right. Uh, my turn. I have distraction and close call. Um, oh, great. Killer kills two. This is going to go up two more. I'm thinking maybe I should hang on to this and wait until I have all my free cards. Two plus whatever I'm buying. Although I already have three. If I buy all six of these and I have nine cards, I can only buy one card with my six time. So, don't really want that. Or I only buy, well, I buy two searches and don't do one of my free ones. Then I'm still wasting two points. Or I buy two search and, I don't know, sprint. No, no, I don't think that's a good idea. I think I use this now, even though I only have two dice. Ooh, but I do need at least one success, otherwise I'm going to lose four time. can't even discard to do anything about that. Uh, Alright, I can lower it one and lose four time. Well, now I can only buy one search. Or I can try to do a reroll. Which, I mean, if I fail with both of these, I could still lower this one and lose four time. I'm definitely not raising it one and losing two time. All right, I'll do a reroll. So reroll one of these. All right. Reroll the other one, or reroll again. You only get to reroll one die, or spend two time to reroll all dice. I probably should have done that. Although, then if I still fail, I'll have zero time. Ah, well, reroll one die. And got ones and twos on all four rolls. Well, this is horrible so far. Um, so I lose four time, but hey, this goes down one, but it's just about to go back up two, maybe. All right, free cards and search is what I'm buying. This goes back to six. These go back over here. That was pathetic. The first two turns have been disastrous. Well, no, I'll be using focus first. Two of them, and hopefully getting into the green. And then moving over there and searching. Oi. All right. Um, poltergeist turn. Poltergeist moves. Kills one of these. Bloodless goes up one, nothing happens. And then terror card. And then there will be a panic unless the other one gets killed right here. And oh, two terror and kills this victim. Jeez. Uh, if there are victims on the board, discard. If there are no victims, okay. So terror level goes up, or horror level goes up two. 
Terra level is hostage negotiator. And then killed another one, so this goes there. This goes up another two. <sighs> this is not good. All right, I think this might be a short fight. Okay, um, nobody to panic now because they both died. Honestly, I think the only chance I'm going to have is if Carolyn and Mr. Floppy are both here in the garage and I just get lucky. Uh, with the start the poltergeist has had and the start I've had. Ugh. If this goes up again. It's going to take three kills for that, or a terror card. If it goes up again, then I only have one die. But, focus, I should be able to lower it. Okay, alright, so it's my turn. Focus. Ugh. Hanging on to search and a walk. I don't need weak attack or short rest, so I guess one success. Lower it one, and I have to lose two cards. Uh, and I really need to lower it some more, so we'll use the other focus. And no successes again, but. Uh, All right, both walks. I'm not going to go to the garage yet. All right, one success. Let's lose one time. Hang on to search. And I, only, I have four time. I'm going to buy sprint, which might get me to the garage, and the other search for four points. Close calls go over there. Okay, so that was uh, three disastrous turns. Well, I mean, I guess it could have been slightly worse if I didn't roll any successes, although then I would be walking over here and doing some searching, maybe. I might run out of time first. Anyway, Sprint's going to come up next. Ugh. All right, uh, Poltergeist moves over here and kills that. Whoops, Bloodlust was on there. Bloodlust goes up one. And there are only three victims left. And what's the terror card? Uh, okay. Lightning strikes your space and the space adjacent to you. One victim in each space is killed, and you lose one health equal to the poltergeist, or you lose health equal to the poltergeist's current attack value. So I lose two. And, eh, well. That's the only adjacent space with victims, so one victim gets killed. Great. God, my meat shield shields are almost all gone. Ugh. All right. <laughs> uh. Honestly, even if they're both in there, that might not be enough. Okay, uh, sprint. So if I get one success, I can move two spaces and make it to the garage if I roll a success. I could also just wait until I get some more cards on the next turn, but then I have to, that's an extra turn before I can do any searching. Uh, yeah, I, I need to search as soon as possible, so I just have to take my chances. I can discard I can discard both of these to move two spaces and uh, lose one time, but then I don't have. Then I'm gonna have to wait two turns to search. Or I can just take the failure. I can uh, move one space, lose two time, lose one health, and end my turn. Which losing one health actually wouldn't be terrible. Then I'd have an extra die. <laughs> or I can just lose one health and lose two time. Well, either way, my turn's going to be over, so I may as well 
move a space. Well, okay, or I can discard both of these and move to the garage, but then not have any search <sighs> and lose one time. Now I'll take the loss of two time, the loss of health, and move <laughs> one. But I'll get my two walks. I just need to I just need one to get there. And I have an extra die. Oh, this is going awfully so far. All right, turns over. I can buy my six free cards and two more cards. I have four points. God, I almost need guard already. Um, I kind of need distraction to try to get into the green. Or improvise to try to get some, make threes and fours be successes, although I really doubt I'm going to get two. Uh, all right, which one of these do I want? Try to get an extra die between that and the two focus. Or, oh, good news is Poltergeist can't kill anybody. Poltergeist can only reach here, or I guess can use the ladder. I don't know. I think Poltergeist probably stays in the house. Yeah, it doesn't, wouldn't make any sense for Poltergeist to go out there. Although I don't think it's said. Um, so uh, yeah, Poltergeist will be moving to there. If it can't go through walls and floors. Ooh, it's actually going to take three movement unless some victim moves to get to a victim. Uh, yeah, it's going to take... Uh, unless the... Well, I guess the poltergeist can probably go that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poltergeist can go that way. I assume. It's a one-way movement for me and victims. All right, so... Uh, what, all right, what are we doing? Oh, yeah. So which one of these do I want to buy? Well, I guess it'll be one of those and close call. That'll be four points. But which one? Try to get green or lots of successes on the next, hopefully on the next one. You know what? I think I want this. All right. Distraction. Improvise. You go back. That's my four points. That's all of them. Go back to six. Put sprint back over here. Poltergeist turn. Moves three. Nobody to attack. And I guess would have been targeting this victim. Okay, terror card. Place the poltergeist in your space. Oh, and <laughs> and then it doesn't attack. And I have nothing to defend against it. If you take any damage, all of your moves during the next action phase are panicked. Ugh. So if I move, if I try to use walk, I have to roll a three to six to get there. Well, not three to six, four to six. I assume that's, with these numbers on here, I assume the number in here is what you roll to go that way. Oh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense the other way. You'd have... Uh, Overlaps of things. All right. Uh, okay, poltergeist is in my space and then attacks. If there were a victim with me, the poltergeist would attack the victim. Well, I take damage because I have nothing I can defend with. Didn't think I needed a guard yet. Apparently, I should have bought a guard. And I am taking damage. It's just a question of am I still alive? There's a one in three chance. And I'm dead. <laughs> that was so fast. The, uh, the only thing I managed, I started here the entire game. I moved one space and lowered this a couple times to counteract it going up. That's it. And I'm dead. Well, I guess I may as well do one more time. I mean, that one only took about 20 minutes. Let's try one more. Uh, 
had some extreme bad luck there. Oh, I'm curious, what was in the garage? After the old revolver, there was mysterious pills, ancient text, so no, I would have had to go to one of the other spaces, and lucky rabbit's foot, so nothing. Oh, they were both in the attic. This one. I don't think I ever had a hostage negotiation go that poorly. So what did I get there? Three turns? I think that was it. Wait, how many tarot cards? Uh, five. One made me draw an extra one, though. That made me draw an extra one. I guess I had four turns. <sighs> All right, this starts on three. That was pretty funny. We'll start with only two dice. You know, I didn't pour myself any booze today. I guess I really should have. Kind of need it after these fights. The first time I was pretty close. I mean, if, if it hadn't been for those horrible guard rolls at the end, I would have made it. I mean, it would have been a, no problem with those walks and sprints with, all, with some discards, rolling four dice. Uh, would have been no problem getting out. But yeah, when you have complete failures on those guard rolls, well, that screwed me. So that one was pretty close. This one was not. Okay, terror set. Oh, what was this one? She will soon be lost. So the finale was uh, draw a terror card. Wait. But the finale doesn't come out until the terror deck's empty. What are you talking about? Oh, add three cards to the terror deck when this card is revealed. Ah, right, right. and then instead of doing anything, the poltergeist doesn't come attack you. It was draw a terror card. If you aren't able to do so, you immediately lose the game. Huh, so you get three more rounds and then that's it. Well, maybe three. These could make you draw again. All right. That might've been nice um, or better finale the other time. Okay. Finale card. Dark power card. Set up. Um, that's the same one I had first time. Strange trophies, so killer. Poltergeist starts in a foyer. I start in the trophy room. 
Two victims there, two victims in the attic. One going across each of the rooms in the top floor. And then two more over here. Wait a minute. Huh. This has 10 victims just like the last one. Did I? I must have missed two victims when I set it up the first time. Did I maybe miss these two? I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at the video. But I swear I only had eight victims the first time. Oh, no, no, no. Two of them... Wait, the two that attacked me, did they get killed? No. I don't know. Maybe I just was missing some. All right. Or maybe there are two trophy ones. Nope. None of those have that name. Okay. I probably messed up the first time. All right, event. Alice, you suck. You're no Lori. Lori killed the butcher Hans on her first try. No one comes back. Place the skull token in the attic. Uh, this sounds bad. Is it going to just anybody who ever enters the attic besides me is dead? Any victims that ever go there? Skull token in the attic. Uh, all victims in the attic are killed. <laughs> yep. Uh, whenever a victim enters the attic, they are killed immediately. Okay, yeah, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. All right. Huh. Okay, so now there are only eight victims available. Well, okay, that means bloodlust will only go up to there unless there's something else that triggers bloodlust. Still need items and then ready to go. All right, so I need 10 items. Okay, in the closet, trash can lid, all right, with some other stuff, in the attic, the knife, mm, all right, hopefully, let's see, I guess I go to the attic last, yeah, go over to the closet, in the closet, Lucky rabbit's foot, okay. Uh, discard during the action phase to make a horror roll. Oh, okay. So roll however many dice you have. For each success, you get to choose any one of these. Two time, one health, lower the horror level by one, or move one space. Eh, eh, all right. uh, well, i probably end up with that because that's the first place I'm going. Unfortunately, I don't get to take meat shields with me into the attic. Um, let's see. And anybody here who panics, a three through six goes to the attic. So, And then immediate death. <sighs> okay. Um, well, maybe I should go to the attic first. I don't know. Uh, what was in the... Oh, the knife is in the attic. Eh. Closet has the trash can lid. Yeah, I guess I'm going there. All right, I need my free cards. Oh, close call should be over there. All right, so here we go. Last attempt. Well, we'll do the usual. Try to get into the green.
Okay, one success, and then I can discard two to make it two successes, which will net me three time. Um, weak attack and short rest. I won't be using this turn, so... Is it worth it? Probably not while well, I'm only rolling two dice. Now I need to save these. So I'll lose one time. Lower that one. Okay, other focus. Yeah, see, I needed it for that. All right, lose one time. Now I'll discard these to turn that into a success. So this goes down one. I get another die. And now we'll walk over to try to get through the closet. Oh, oh no, I did it. Okay, got the event. Uh, wasn't missing anything. Okay, walk. <clears throat> so I get three dice now. Uh, it'd be nice if one of these lets me move two spaces. Reroll that. So, well, there's a success. So I get to move one space. Yeah. All right. One space, but I do lose a time. Great. I may not make it to the closet, and we'll only get to buy one search. Should probably buy a sprint instead if I don't make it to the closet right now. All right. Other walk. Ugh, one, one, one. All right. Move one space, lose two time, and lose a health, or just lose two time. Well, either way, I'm going to be down to one time, and so now I can't even buy Sprint. All I'll be able to buy is a close call. Uh, do I want to move and lose a health, or stay here? Oh, it was four spaces to the closet, not three. Uh, yeah, I still have two more spaces to move to get there, so I'll, yeah, I'll lose the health, lose the time. Ugh, all right. Well, I got my three dice, but that still was not a good turn. Uh. Yeah, once I got the third dice, then the third die, then, uh, yeah, downhill from there. All right, uh, put these back, five, six. Well, I, that was at least better than how it started last game. All right, Poltergeist moves to, well, up the stairs from the foyer and kills a victim. Back in the white. Uh, that one will panic unless also, unless that one also gets killed from the terror card, let's see. It's going to die. Voices, I hear voices. If there are no victims, nope. All victims able to move up to the next floor do so. Oh, come on. That one's dead. <laughs> um, oh, there's stairs here, so which way is that one going to go? Do I get to pick? Yeah, all right. It's not a panicked move, so I can pick. And there's stairs going to either one of those, so... Alright, um, yeah, stairs, 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 so that's it. But another victim's dead, and then target the nearest victim. Oh, poor level goes up one. Target the nearest victim, that one. Move and attack. Dead. Goes up another one, get to see the dark power now. Ugh. Uh, but only two movement is not going to be able to attack next turn. That's good with just this part, but what's the dark power? Ah, stiff wind again. Great. My movement is hindered again. Okay. Hey, maybe I'll be get lucky. Carolyn's in here, and I can just move back down here, jump out the window, and hey, all done. Okay, my turn. Um, all I have is close call, so I don't get to do anything. Oh, wait a minute. I'm the nearest one. Great. Ooh, but that's going to take off two. I'll get an extra die. But 
might get attacked again. <laughs> um, well, all right, unless the poltergeist can go up here, even though this is an arrow movement, I mean, it's a poltergeist. It can probably move up there. In which case, those are both two spaces away, me or the victim. So I think the poltergeist is going to go there. All right, you know what? Let's just make sure. Where was the... Um, all right, special rules for... One-way movement spaces. A few of the spaces have exits in one direction. These spaces have white arrows indicating which direction you can move. The spaces are still considered to be adjacent in both directions. You're not allowed to move against an arrow. You can't climb up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enemies and victims also are subject to these rules, but this is a poltergeist. So how about poltergeist special rules? Oh, uh, this doesn't say anything. So, I don't know. It doesn't say the poltergeist can move that way. I would think the poltergeist can, but... Mm. <clears throat> Put it in the notes. Put it on Board Game Geek. Uh, poltergeist, direction arrow. Okay, so if the poltergeist can't move that way, then the poltergeist is attacking me. Which really, that space is pretty small here. We'll do this. Use one of these for the first time. There. Wait a minute. And all I have for next turn is close call. The poltergeist is going to attack me again. I, I'm like, um, unless this is three hearts, I'm... Oh, no, no. Uh, if this has any hearts, I won't be dead yet. But, right? This is, this is the first turn. Or what are we on? Oh, no, no, no. I went... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, first turn I bought, I, I used all these. I think I skipped my purchasing phase. Okay, first turn I used all these. They went to the discard. I was down to one time. I bought close call. These went back. And then this happened. Well, yeah, poltergeist stuff happened. Then next turn, all I have is close call, so I don't do anything. And then poltergeist move is coming over here. No, no, I'm supposed to buy stuff. All right. So, all right, those, I get my free cards, and then I have six points. All right, so I need guard. Um, do I want two guards? Or do I want the two searches? Because, you know what, I'm going to be in a hurry. Guard, two searches. I only need one guard. Poltergeist is only doing two damage right now, so uh, guard will be fine. I just need one success in three dice, which I expect to get one. May not get one, but I also have all the discards. Um, wait, is that too many? I have my two searches, six free, those, okay, ten cards. There, I was supposed to do that. Then Poltergeist comes over here and attacks me. Now, the question is, do I want to guard while the poltergeist is only doing two damage? That would take me down to one health. I'll get an extra die, which I probably need. And then this could be something that's going to attack me again. Then I'll use the guard. I think I'm going to do that. All right, you know what? You can hit me. Yay, I get an extra die. Yeah, let's put it on one with all these other stupid ones. All right. Uh, terror card. Oh, okay. Good thing I have weak attack because it looks like I'm going to need it. Did that clown just move? A clown doll appears. You may play action cards. 
that inflict damage, so I just need one success. If you wish, it only has one health, so I just need to do one damage, I'll be okay. If the clown doll is still alive, then you take damage equal to the killer's attack value, so that would be two, uh, which I could defend against it. If you take damage, bloodlust, and then the clown doll disappears. Okay, so I just need one success with a weak attack. Oh, but if I only take get one success, <laughs> I also take a damage that can't be avoided, so actually I need two successes. So okay, I have a re-roll, and if anything comes up three or four, I can discard two cards. I have plenty of cards for that. Or maybe I just let it attack me and use guard. Hmm. Because with guard, I just need one success to reduce damage by two, which is all it's going to hit me for. So guard would be enough to stop. One success would be enough to stop it. Whereas if I weak do use a weak attack, I need two successes to avoid losing my health. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to use weak attack. I'm going to use guard. All right, just need one success. Uh, there's only bloodlust if I take damage, which I won't be if I get at least one success. Okay. I got one. So reduce damage by two. Damage is zero. Clown disappears. And I'll be moving off of there. So next turn, unless Poltergeist is specifically targeting me with this, I will not get attacked. The meat shields will get attacked instead. Uh, well, let's see. I should probably move up here and then take a meat shield with me into there. And then this will go over there. And then come up there. But only two movement, so that's good. Ooh. All right. So it's... Yeah, next turn, this is going to go up here. It won't get those two horror level increases yet. And then, wait, why do I have four dice? I get one from that. Did I accidentally uh, leave one in there when I was supposed to take one out for this? Eh. Oh, well. I rolled one extra die one time. That's okay. <clears throat> um, yeah. Poltergeist is going to come here, and then uh, it'll take two turns to get up here, unless this is extra movement or something. So, all right. It's, it's okay if uh, my luck improves on these rolls. All right, so the tarot card, all done. My turn. Um, focus. Let's get that fourth die. And then I'm going to have to walk. Need to move two spaces. I have weak attack and short rest. I can discard. I'm just going to stay on one health because... It gives me an extra die. I think I need it, but I definitely will need to buy another guard. Just in case. As long as I have enough time. All right, focus. Three dice. And one success. I can discard another two cards to get two time instead of losing one time. Um... So definitely get those two, uh, but I want to keep search, search, focus, walk, walk. I only have these two, well, in close call. I only have three cards available that I might want to trash, and I still need to do, oh, I want to do all these actions. Oh, I'm not going to have any time. Well, okay, if I still have stuff left over, I'll have just enough to buy guard. Focus. All right, we'll do that. I'll lose the one time. Focus. All right, 
should have four dice after this. One success. All right, same thing. Uh, yeah, all right, lose a time. Yay, four dice. Walk. Although, if I get two successes, I only have to use one of the two walks. Well, to get to the closet. All right, uh, okay, come on, two successes. Okay. Well, either way, I'm going to lose a time. If I just take the one, I only move one space, or I trash two cards, and I move two spaces, and then I don't need this other walk, and then I have two searches, I still have two cards to trash. Yeah, I think I do that. All right, so I move two spaces. Let's get rid of this. So now I'm in the closet. I'm taking Meat Shield with me. Trashing those two. Did I lose my time already? Yeah, I've done two focus and a walk. Each one lost one time. Uh, if I have to trash both of these, then I won't actually be able to buy guard. Because uh, I am doing both searches. All right, first search. Really want two successes. Uh, one. But I can, again, trash. Hmm, yeah. So I get to take the top two items in the closet and see which one I want to keep. Oh, and I get trash can lid. That's or unless I want this instead. Yeah. Mr. Floppy. Um, I should probably take Mr. Floppy just in case, but I really want a trash can lid. You can ignore three damage and then it's discarded. Well, I don't have to have Mr. Floppy, but I could get that stupid card that there's probably more than one of. It says, Carolyn goes back in the deck. So I'm going to take Mr. Floppy and put this on the bottom so that if I get lucky and get two stars on the next roll, and did I lose my one time? I did not. If I get lucky and get two stars, I get to see both. Uh, I've seen everything that's in the closet. If I put trash can on the bottom. All right. Okay, give me two stars. Give me two stars. Damn. Nothing to trash. So I only get one star. I get the top item. Come on, be Carolyn. It is. Ooh, okay. Uh, I lose one time. But now I don't get to buy a guard. I do have my meat shields, though, and this is going over here. It can't reach me unless the tarot card just says, go to your space. Uh, but then unless it specifically says, and it attacks you, it'll hit one of the meat shields. Uh, all right, so I used search. I only have one time, so all I can buy is a close call. Well, that was fortunate. Mr. Floppy and Carolyn. And even if the Carolyn comes up, I have Mr. Floppy. Carolyn's not going anywhere. Does, Carolyn, does Mr. Floppy have to be in my hand? Or can I have Mr. Floppy in my backpack? Does that count? Uh, oh, oh, if the dark power has been revealed, you may remove this from the game to ignore the effects of Carolyn, where are you? So hopefully that means there's only one of those. And I just happened to come across it both games, and it was the very first card last time. So hopefully there's just one. If this card is discarded for any reason, shuffle it into the... No, no, there might be more than one. Well, no, no, it says remove it from the game. So that's not the same as discarding. Um... If it's discarded, you put it back in the deck. Hmm. All right, so hopefully there's just one of those. 
Okay. Uh, well, I won't be doing anything next time. Maybe I should search again while I'm here. Get that trash can lid just in case. Because, <laughs> yeah, next turn I'll be doing nothing but buying stuff. All right, back to six. I don't know. Or I just get some defensive cards and uh, sprint and just try to get the hell out of here. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot about Stiff Wind. I was supposed to not be able to move two spaces with uh, Walk. Um, but I moved two spaces because I turned it into two successes by discarding two cards. Instead, I would have just played the other Walk card instead of discarding it. And probably what would have been the case is I would have had zero time instead of one. So I'm just going to get rid of Close Call. Yep, I messed up with a stiff wind. But, yeah, what that would have meant, because I, I know I discarded two cards on walk to turn it into a success, so I still would have had walk and then, I don't know, one other card. And then this, I would have just needed one success, and I'm sure I would have had it. There, okay. And so I would have moved one space from that one. And, well, I guess then I'd still have one more card left. Okay, fine. I'll keep a close call. Uh, that's how it should have worked out. All right. But yeah, this is going to make it harder to get away, but I only have to go. Well, Poltergeist is going to go over here, so maybe I should go one, two, three, four, five instead of one, two, three, four. It's one more space, but if I go that way, and just leave the meat shields here, then uh, unless the poltergeist goes straight to me, I'll be able to get away. Well, poltergeist is going to move up here. No, I don't know. We'll see. No, because I'm doing nothing. Poltergeist is probably going to be here when I take my next turn. So, yeah, all right, I'll be okay. All right. Um, I bought my one point to reset everything, so Poltergeist's turn goes to nearest end victim and dead. Ooh, this is going to go up to hopefully not anytime soon. Ooh, I could get another one of those happening to me. I do have the one health. I might want to heal, but it's a question of do I want to heal or do I want these? Well, if I get some defensive dice, I'll be all right. All right, what's this? The shadows are closing in. Uh, again, isn't that what I got? Oh, oh, that was last game when I lost in three turns. Uh, shadows are closing in. If there are no victims, no. Horror level goes up two. Target nearest victim. Move and do one attack. Um... Yeah, it's four to go around that way. It's three to go up here, but only two movement, so doesn't make it to do an attack. Just moves there. However, next turn, now it's going to come in here and attack. Eh, that's okay. I have meat shields. <sighs> okay. Um, uh, panic? Nope, nobody panics. No upkeep. So... <coughs> I only have close call, I don't get to do anything, I just get to buy six points. Get my free cards, that's seven, and then for six, I'm thinking sprint, sprint, guard. So I have one defensive card just in case, that gives me ten cards total, and I have enough movement here that if I get lucky, I can get out in one turn. Uh, but I only have three dice now, so that doesn't help. Although, oh, and it's going to go up too. So there's no way I'm going to get back down to the green. <sighs> okay. Uh, that's it for my turn. Nothing to put back over here. That's at six. All right, so poltergeist. 
moves in here with us, it kills one of these. And then if that other one's still alive, it's going to panic. Oh, Bloodlust goes up one, so now this goes up two. Terror card. Everything was flying around. Another one. Oh. Uh, place the poltergeist with the closest victim. That's you know, right here. And then target final girl or victim. Do one attack. Well, victims are prioritized, so that victim's dead. This goes up one again. Fortunately, I still have three dice. I may need to use some focus just to move it down there a little bit, just in case. Uh, but that'll be after doing this. I need these as trash cards first. All right, but no, I think if I get lucky, I can get out right now. All right, let's, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, uh, nobody left to panic, no upkeep, so yeah, all right, my turn. So sprint, sprint, walk, walk. I guess I should do the walking for, oh, but that's right. These all have, if I only, if I get no successes, I lose a health. However, I have a reroll or six cards to trash. <sighs> should be okay. Uh, but maybe I should use short rest. Although then I'll lose a die. And I'll be down to two. No, no. I'm taking my chances. <clears throat> Unless I roll all ones and twos, I'm okay. Alright, so does it really matter? Well, I guess sprints have the possibility of ending your turn, but I'm probably dead at that point anyway, so no, I don't think it really matters. These can only move one. If I get, th these will move one on one star, two on two stars, because of the farting poltergeist. Uh, so I need yeah, one of these to be two successes. And then each of these to be at least one. If that happens, I can get out right now. All right, let's do a sprint first to find out if I can even We'll do those first to find out if I can get out on this turn. Otherwise, maybe I hang on to the walks. All right, three dice is correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's fine. One star, and I can turn that into a second one by trashing weak attack and short rest. Move two spaces. <laughs> okay. So I can get out of here. I just need one success on each of these. Oh, and I also lose one time. All right, yeah, I just need one success on each of these. I still have four cards to trash. And I expect to get one star each time. Um, doesn't really matter. Here, we'll use the other, well, I'll use the other sprint. If I get two stars, then I only need one of these. Okay, that's fine. Oh, all right. Yeah, all right. We'll trash the two focus cards. Take a turn, make that two successes, so I get to move two spaces again. Oh, I have Carolyn with me. And Mr. Floppy. Uh, is there a miniature for Mr. Floppy? Aw, too bad. There isn't. All right, so now we're there. And I still have two cards to trash. Actually, three, because I only need one walk. So if I got all ones and twos, I can at least re-roll. Oh, wait, wait, I lost time again. I could spend two time to re-roll all my dice. Um, right, I've only moved the two times. Yeah. Yeah, I did sprint, sprint. I should have lost one time twice. So yeah, even if it's a complete failure, I can re-roll all the dice and then... Unless it's a complete failure again, I can trash two to get one success and escape with Carolyn. I have six spaces to there. This was the shortest route. I didn't even consider the front entrance. All right, three dice, just need one star. 
Or actually, I just need one die that isn't a one or a two. All right, I got a three. That's enough. Trash a couple cards. And now I lose one time and move one space. And yay! I only got out because I got it extremely lucky that the first place I looked had Carolyn and Mr. Floppy, but I didn't even need Mr. Floppy. Although that attic killed three, three victims. Yeah, Poltergeist has killed five. Yay, success. So what else was in the, what was gonna come up next? Oh, place the poltergeist in your space. It would have attacked me if I hadn't made it out in that turn, unless I was still on a space with a meat shield. Oh, actually what I should have done was when I moved through here, take taking the meat shield with me. Or as soon as I got to that meat shield, yeah, I should have had that with me just in case something like this came up. Ah, Carolyn, where are you? So if it had lasted two more turns, then yeah, I would have... Uh, needed Mr. Floppy. Something unholy happened in the blank. I don't want to see exactly what's on there. Let's keep some surprises around. Everything was flying around. Yeah, there are multiple ones of those. I have to, oh, and then there's the one, the victims hurt you. And then, uh, yeah, the behemoth again. I wonder how many duplicates there are in there. Um, did I have extra health? Oh, sure, this time I had extra health. The one time I didn't need it. Ooh, and what was the finale card? Relentless Assault. Ooh, place the poltergeist in your space. Do two attacks on you or find uh, meat shields. All right. Yay, won that time. But the, the second game and the third game all just came down to complete luck. They were both fairly short. The first one was the best. That actually had that actually had some tension in there. All right, well, that was fun. That's uh, two different killers and locations. But yeah, I wonder what. But you could do the poltergeist. Oh, I took the poltergeist instead of me. I stayed in the closet. Um. Yeah, I wonder what poltergeist on Camp Happy Trails would be like. Alright, well that was fun. Game's pretty good. But that's it for now. Uh, look over there. Okay. Alright, yeah, that's it for now. So, until next time, das vidanya.